Yeah, good morning, and thank you for joining this session. I'll start by talking a little bit about additive manufacturing, and the title for the, this session is Accelerating Additive Manufacturing Through Simulation. So when we talk about additive manufacturing, we face a lot of wishes of things that we want to do. We call it business objectives or business wishes, such as we want to have the parts uh, faster, shorter time to market, reduced or integrated complexity, designed for functionality, and a lot more things. On the other hand, there are challenges, such as a high-speed PowerPoint presentation. Um, challenges such as uh, that we need to face, such as in the simulation uh, world, we often face uh, disconnected tools, individual tools, incompatible formats, repetitive efforts. We have to do things over and over again. Traceability challenges. Who knows what we did when and where, where did we do it? In the end, the overall impression is AM is cumbersome and costly. It's not no fun. So, what do we have? Well. As it is, or as we often see it, we have disconnected point solutions. So the individual steps were from CAD design with the bridge or the, the gap that needs to be um, bridged by step export. We import the geometry into the FE uh, generation tool. Then again, if we want to create the scan path, the print path, we have to go to yet another tool. Oftentimes that involves the requirement to, to, to import the data into, uh, to, to go through step, which may or be, uh, STL, which may or not be co compatible. We create the print path and um, import that data in the print simulation. And where, where do you go from there? Well, if you want to go maybe back to CAD or link it, there are challenges, import, export, with disconnected data, things don't really work. And once we have the scan path, can we use that in the printer? Maybe. So overall, the impression is it doesn't really work nicely. It's what I'm calling a discouraging experience. You don't really want to do that if you don't have to. And it's just not a fun thing. And we're talking about accelerating it. This is not a fast way of doing things. Alternatively, is the combined effort. Here you see, you see parts connected. So we go all the way from generative design, process planning, that, inclu that includes um, scan path generation and um, support structure generation, layout of the part and everything, to virtual printing, print simulation, and even further, service load analysis, and that may include things like fatigue, recycling, whatever, all connected and co collaborative. And it's easy to use. And that's what I essentially wanted to show today. So. The part that we are looking at today is um, something that you may have seen before uh, from this presentation on generative design, and right now it's uh, fa facing us. It's this um, so-called joiner. Uh, I don't have a pointer right now, but it's a part in the, in the center. And in uh, previous analysis or previous uh, presentations, we went through this part all the way from um, initial design to um, optimization, as we have it here, for additive manufacturing, casting or milling, and as we're talking additive manufacturing, we're choosing the variant that is uh, associated with additive manufacturing. So this is the part which will um, accompany us throughout this uh, presentation. Let's have a first look at the first step. So we said that uh, we start out with CAD design, and here we have the comparison, the as-is workflow, the cumbersome one that is. We start with the, okay, so, um, with the um, step the necessity to um, export a step file, re-import the step file, and as you know from experience, um, step is a dumb cat format, so there's no option to make small, ch small changes along the way. And um, again, we may have data import issues, the overall experience is not really satisfying. On the other hand, in 3D experience, you saw in the previous slide, we had this part, we optimized it in um, generative design, and all we need to do is switch the app. Go from one to the other, so we have a seamless transition uh, from generative design to CAD to, to part design. All we need to do is switch the app and go back and forth from structural generative design to part design. That's quick and easy, and we are happy about that. 